you know, you can scooch that way a little bit and you'll still be in the frame. <laughs> I couldn't see it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Josh and Nick here. We are over in Seattle, Washington. We are on a trip that we had talked about for only about two hours. By the end of that, that chat, we actually ended up booking it and taking action on it, which got us thinking about being in sales, about how different theory versus action actually is. versus action, I think how action is actually great power for a lot of people, and then give you guys a couple of real examples that both of us have experienced. Yeah. So I think the very first part that we want to start with is theory versus action, and Nick had a great way of describing this earlier on the plane. Yeah, so if you're talking about theory and action, theory is kind of phase one. Um, it's maybe you're learning the concept, it's the idea. Um, and it's more of a generalization. And then action is, you know, you know the concepts and then putting it into place. And so Josh was talking about, um, we were talking about a theoretical trip, something we wanted to do. And then phase two of that, you know, after you have the idea, it's actually putting it in place. And that's why we are here today. The only difference between the dreamers and then the people who actually achieve their dreams is you just have to do it and try and get out there. Nowadays with entrepreneurships and startups, the only difference is, you know, you just have to go do it and put yourself out there. Right. Every idea that we've had, you growing up, me being a, uh, just a couple years older, yeah. but essentially going through college and <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> going, going through college, getting into the sales world, there's a lot of ideas that we've had, yeah. a lot of theories that we've had. But the only thing that's actually gotten us to the where we are today is action. Actually getting it done, which is a perfect segue. Exactly what you're just saying there is that action is actually power, right? So one thing I wanted to bring up, and Nick and I actually talked about this as well, is is the fact if if you had a statement, if somebody's talking to you or trying to teach you something, they say what I've seen or read, or what I've actually done in my experience. What is a more powerful statement? Yeah. What is something that is actually going to make you want to listen to that person? I would say it's that second statement. What that person has actually done. They've actually taken action. They've experienced something. And they want to be able to actually share with you on whatever you're actually asking, whatever question yeah. you have, whatever kind of advice you're requesting. Versus the person that maybe read a great article on something like sales and thinks they now know exactly what they need to do to get a deal closed. But in all reality, it's actually just an article in theory. They haven't actually done it. Yeah, so the difference between, you know, if you've always been in the theory phase, you're talking about theory learned from others. But if you're fortunate enough and the type of person to get to the action phase, you can then actually talk in terms of theory based off of your own experiences rather than just others. One thing to just bring up before the next piece here, and we want to give you guys real life examples of what we've done for both theory and the action side, is that action's kind of scary. I know we didn't really know we talk about this, but I mean, at the end of the day, action is actually uncomfortable. But the thing is, is in terms of personal growth or you wanting to get your goals done, a lot of times you do have to get outside your comfort zone. Especially you have about terms of growth because you have to get uncomfortable in order to grow. If you're always in your comfort zone, always doing the same routine, what you're used to, and you're just staying put. Our real life example is gonna be a couple different things. So I'll kick this one off on theory versus action. And it's, it's my actual college career. So I went into school, ended up going to the professional selling program, and it was an intense year of internships and role plays. For those of you that don't know what a sales role play is, you basically sit across the table for somebody, handle objections, all stuff that you've prepared on scripts. And of course the buyer, the other person on the other side, is gonna give you technically scripted responses to, to kind of drive the conversation. And I'll be honest, I thought I was hot shit when I graduated out of the professional selling program because I thought I had the experience, I had more sales ability than anybody else graduated out of college, and then I hit the real world. So the beginning there is theory, right? Theoretically, here's the role play. And then I hit the real world and I was actually being put to the test every single day. And it was so different. 
It was uncomfortable, it was scary, I got my ass kicked, but it helped me grow and by taking action and continuing to improve myself, I made President's Club, I, I made good money that allowed me to invest in other things that I want to spend time on, but I couldn't have done that if I hadn't actually made that transition from, as Nick said, phase one, theory, over to phase two, which is actually action, getting it done. So, transferring from sales into marketing, and nowadays, with especially social media, is great to talk about marketing and theory versus action because with you know Ty Lopez's courses out there on social media marketing, everyone thinks you know it, it's so easy. But then you talk to somebody who thinks they know everything about advertising on Facebook and Instagram who have never actually run a paid ad, and you can talk about what the concepts are in marketing to you know get the salience of a brand, resonance of a brand, and you can talk about, this ad should get good impressions, this ad should get good engagement, but you've never actually ran an ad to learn what works and what <laughs> doesn't. When I graduated a year ago and I had gone through all the courses, learned about digital marketing, branding, I thought I had a great idea on, yeah, I, you run this ad on Facebook, put money into it, you wanna get this you know, cost per acquisition of the customer, um, but until I actually got into a luxury company where I was actually running paid ads, then it's a lot more of learning as you're going and the difference you learn between theory and action is action gets a lot more specific. So you talk about theory in terms of what generally works for overall demographics and populations, but then as I learned in that job, once you get to the action point, it's a lot more focused. What's the niche? What's the customer you're going after? And so very similar in terms of sales and marketing is in, on the sales side too. It's you're role playing, you have these objections, but you know, action, it's the person in front of you, not the overall, oh, this would probably work to overcome that objection. I think the only other piece you want to bring up here too is we will both talk professionally there. Marketing, sales, they work beautifully together, but the, the other side is traveling too. And Nick made up a, a great example, which of course you got to share this too, but we we booked this trip, right? We had a couple hours in the office one day. We thought about it. Theoretically, it'd be like, we need a, a break. We'd love to go <laughs> fly across country and do something. Where haven't you been? Seattle? Cool. Let's do it. Within three hours, we literally had this trip booked. We could have continued to talk about it. We could have waited until Friday, which of course, nothing would have happened. But theory versus action is a lot more than just sales and marketing. It's honestly your personal life too, travel, anything like that. Yes, and talking about the trip, you made me think of the difference between theory and action too, is people are so afraid of commitment. Commit to the traveling or committing to doing something that gets you uncomfortable. That's and really what Josh point. was saying at the beginning, action can be scary. You are making the commitment. That's all we got on theory versus action. You saw the title of the, the YouTube video. It is, what do you choose? I'd really like to hear your comments below on where do you think we're hitting the nail on the head and where do you think we're a little off here? So the three things that we talked about is really the difference between theory versus action. We talked about how action is power, so we both believe there is a need for theory. Obviously, there's a place mm -hmm. to start, but phase two is where you actually get your goals done, your dreams done, get uncomfortable. Then the last one we gave you was actual examples that we've experienced both with theory and action and being completely transparent with the fact that we get scared too, just like any other human being. It's actually breaking through that fear and taking action. So guys, thanks for joining the video. I know I had mentioned this on the Wisconsin and Iowa video that we were gonna be doing Seattle content. I did promise motorcycles too, so we're gonna be doing our own content tomorrow, working together on this one on our motorcycles all day long. Josh just turned 30, so he's gonna be able to make a video on how to make the most out of your 20s. I'm 21, just finished up my teens pretty much, so I'm gonna do a video on how to make the most of your teens. <laughs> That's a year and a half ago, basically. So we'll both have those on our respective channels. Yep, and I'll have Nick's channel in the description below. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Peace.